Recording in progress. All right, so now we're recording. So again, uh, for 1.6, really just want to isolate the variable. That's all you're trying to do here. Um, so yeah, I would actually combine like terms and then move the nine over and then divide by three. So really simple, right? Combine like terms and then get X by itself. X is on the right side, so let's get all the other jumps to the other side. Divide by three. Now, if I decided to go about this way, when I was at this point here, so you don't have to write this down if you don't want to, but if you wanted to do this, that's totally fine. If you want to move the 3x from right to left, it's a little more work. You can do it. When you divide by negative 3, what has to happen to inequality when you divide by negative? You guys remember? Yep. And why is it switch? You want to guarantee the same result as opposed to what I did originally. You don't want a different result if you do it a different way. If you do it a different way, that's okay. But you got to guarantee the same results. Kind of like when I get to San Francisco, I can take 281.1. Bottom line is I'm going to get to the same place at the end. Right? Same thing here. So just be mindful that if you are divided by a negative, that you flipped inequality. And the reason why you flipped is not some magical thing. It's because you want to guarantee the same result if you did it another way. So, of course, X is less than 3. Right? You can think of like the alligator. The alligator is eating the 3. That's kind of like a grade school, middle school thing that people learn. But um, if you graph it, you're going to put three over here. Don't include the three. How come I don't include the three? Just, 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 there's no equals, just greater than or just less than. Exactly. Exactly right. And then you got that. And because you want values of X less than three, graphically, I got to show that, right? So I could show two, I could show one, I could show zero, I could show a bunch of negative numbers. You don't want to shade to the right of three, because that would be wrong, right? Because x is not bigger than three. Clearly, x is less than three. And you can always check. Like, if I plug zero in, does it work? Zero is greater than negative nine. Boom. We're good. Awesome. Okay. So let's do this again for the next problem. Um, you're going to want to distribute on the right side, of course. So that's going to be positive k and positive three. And positive two. So what do you get when you isolate k? What will be the results? Two. Got it. And k is less than two. So you're going to locate two, not include it, and shade to the left again. Am I wrong? It's not, it's not less than. It's greater, it's greater than. Oh my goodness! I made my first mistake today. That was going to be perfect. Thanks. I saw the hands ready to go up fast. My apologies. Yep. It's great then too. <laughs> my my bad. My bad. Here we go. Okay. So yeah, human error happens. Here we go. Ahead. Hmm? When when there's an equal sign. We don't have color. Oh. Are, are, maybe we're talking about this. Maybe but it works. I don't know. I thought has color for like. It doesn't work for anything. Yeah. I mean, it kind of works for this. Yeah. Like, that's what you start with. Like, like, so. You might be talking about a different song type, maybe. Only this thing. Maybe. Hold on to that thought. Okay. I'm trying to think what you're this thinking of. It's not coming right away. Let's hold, hold on to that thought. Okay. No. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. All right. So questions, we're okay? We're good? All right, let's keep moving. Let's keep the train moving here. All right. Now, these guys. Now, what's happening here is you've got two inequalities going on at once, right? So this is going to be an and situation. That's going to be an or situation. Uh, I like to think of this as a, as kind of play on words, but it's kind of like sandwiched. In between two numbers. Because pretty clear 2x minus 8 is sandwiched in between these two. That's kind of like the, the lower bone, the upper bone, and that's meat. Or if you're vegetarian, lettuce or tomato, whatever. Uh, this is like or. Now this is going to sound kind of tricky. 
I mean, kind of uh, corny, actually. It's going to be kind of like uh, two oars on a rowboat. I know, it sounds very, very corny. But the visuals, I think, will help you remember. So let's so solve the first one. If I solve the first one, I need to get x by itself in the middle, right? So what's, what, what should I do to help me get x by itself in the middle? Yeah, I'd add 8 to everything. Everything. 100%. Everything. It's got to be fair treatment. Where we do the one thing, everything's got to get it. So then you get this. And then what do I do after that? Divide by 2. So that's your result. See how x is sandwiched in between two numbers? So what we would say, if you were to write that up, um, express that in a written format, you could say, yeah, uh, well, let me find a text box that will, of course, respond. Yeah, x is greater than 2 yeah. and x is less or equal to. Yeah, the reason why you use the word and is simultaneous, right? X has to satisfy both at the same time. It has to simultaneously be down to and less than equal to nine. So like three would work, four would work. Um, 10 can't work, even though 10 is greater than two, 10 is not less than equal to nine, right? So you gotta make sure you satisfy both at the same time. Uh, we're gonna see some word problems. Actually, we're gonna play with the words in more detail in the next section 1.7. So the and situation is kind of an important thing to recognize that it's going to be in between two numbers. Questions on how I did that one? Uh, one other thing to take note of, if that coefficient were negative, if that was negative 2x, you're going to flip those inequalities also. Same rules apply. If that were negative, fortunately wasn't, I didn't have to worry about that. But if it were, you have to. Okay, let's look at the next one. Um, I'm going to go and clear my work. Can I clear? We're okay. All right. So this one's not too hard. Just solve each one separately. It's not that bad. Um, you know, that's just kind of like a, two problems in the one. So clearly G is bigger than 17. Very nice. Clearly G is less than negative three. And it's an or situation. So G is less than negative three or G is bigger than 17. The reason why I call it like two ors in a rowboat, if you had negative three and 17 and graphed it, here's how it's gonna look. So it's like two ors in a rowboat, right? <laughs> so that helps you remember what you expect with that. So you have, that has to look like that graph because you can't be less than negative three and greater than 17 at the same time. That's impossible. You're one or the other. Either you're this or you're this. You're not both. So was it um Patrick? Patrick, sorry. I almost said Philip. Sorry, Patrick. Please. Um so on a test, mm -hmm. would we write G can be uh less than negative three mm -hmm. or greater than seventeen? Yeah, like the test, just like that. Exactly, yes. Okay. I am gonna teach you guys another type of notation called interval notation. That won't be until probably down the road, like maybe later in the fall, or I don't know. Um because that's a more universal technique they use in pre-calculus. Um, exactly. But for now, yeah, you just write it like that. And if I asked you to graph it, you'd graph what you see there. Uh, and the other one, which I didn't graph, would look like this. I didn't graph the other one, but remember we had two and nine. See so how one is filled and the other one's not filled in. So if I were to graph the previous problem, the graph would look like that. Okay, questions on inequalities, linear inequalities. Okay, now let's move on to 1.7. 1.7 is a little longer. Uh, this is about absolute value. And before I do some of these problems and solving equations and, oh, there are no inequalities? Oh, there's inequality. Okay, okay. I was like, wow, All right. So this, again, this hopefully should be review. I think this was covered in algebra one, if you took it here last year or, or middle school or somewhere else. Uh, what does absolute value mean? Like if I said like find the absolute value of a number, what does that imply? Like remember your name again? Oh, uh, Matthew. Matthew, yes, go ahead, Matthew. 
how far the number is away from zero. Exactly. How far it is from zero on a number line. So the positive difference from zero on a number line. So another way you could think of it, let me write the text box. Positive difference from zero on a number line. That's really what it is. It's a positive difference from zero on a number line. So if you have negative seven, you say seven. If you have seven, you still say seven. Um, so half by six is six, half by negative six is still six. So it always comes out as being, the output's always positive, except for when you plug zero in, then of course zero is zero, because zero is zero away from zero. So here we got this. So what's half by negative five? That's it, that's simple. Now careful this one, you gotta follow PEMDAS. Five squared, you gotta take care of that first. So the absolute value bracket is kind of like a parentheses in a way. You gotta take care of the five squared first, which I know is 25. And what's the absolute value of 25? 25. 25, but there's a negative on the outside. So it's negative 25. Exactly. It's like negative one times that. Again, it's all PEMDAS stuff. Uh, why don't you guys try this one on your own? We'll see if we get the same thing. I'm going to do it in my head. If I want to do it, go ahead. Be careful. Okay. Let me know when you think you have an answer. All right. And we have an answer you'd like to share? AJ, go ahead. I agree. Good. Yep. Negative one. Thank you. The reason why is you got 12 times negative three. Because you have the extra negative outside the absolute value. Down below, you're doing six squared, which is 36. Which is negative one, right? Oh. Which one are you asked about, it, Lizzie? No, I just, I oh, got it, got it, got it. Oh, it's a times. Oh, yeah, it's a times. <laughs> yeah, I should have done that. That's confusing. Okay, let's read times. Got, gotcha. Okay, I, I, I see the confusion. That was a times. Okay, hopefully you can see why it's negative one. All right. Let's keep moving. Oh, and by the way, if you ever want to add value in the calculator, if it alpha window, I'm doing a recording, so you guys can watch this later. If you hit alpha window in the calculator, you could pull out apps of value. It'll look like that. And so you get this. So if I did negative 12 times negative alpha window negative three then divide that by parentheses alpha window negative six and the parentheses and square up oh, and the parentheses let's do that again here we go yeah you get negative one so remember the calculator falls or of operations this could be very handy if you have to graph apps of it which we are going to do later in this section so we're going to graph apps of value functions. Um, okay, let's do some more. All right. Let me start with this one. This one might be a little easier to start with. Actually, before I do that one, let's back up a little bit. You don't have to write this down. We'll just say this. Very simple. What are the x would equal here? Four. 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 Give me two answers, right? Four or negative four, right? 
it's pretty obvious because we know what it was supposed to mean. It's supposed to be the distance from zero on a number line. X has to be four away from zero. So it'd be four, negative four, right? That's what it means. So you're gonna do something very similar for this one. For that one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say this quantity, one fourth X minus two, whatever that is, you're gonna split it two ways. You're gonna say either this, or you're gonna say either this. Sorry, it's supposed to be a 10. Could be 10 or negative 10. Be 10 or negative 10. Because in, this is the inside of the active value, right? That's like the whole thing inside of it. That whole thing be 10 or negative 10. Thing to solve. At this point, you guys should be comfortable with solving these equations we had in the last class meeting. <laughs> so you can see how everything's building upon itself, right? Like you did linear equations. In the previous section, you're using that knowledge and building on top of that knowledge with this new topic, or supposedly new topic of um, absolute value equations. So you solve each one. Is that someone's phone? iPhone? Android? Not my phone, is it? Nope. Okay, well, give me a silence, please. Great. It might be someone from another class. Oh. Mm. Yeah, go ahead. 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 Yeah, yeah, I know, right? Yeah. That's annoying. Let's we'll deal with it. All right. The other one is pretty simple. Sure. See if that does it. Nope. That <laughs> didn't do anything. Yeah, go ahead, Lizzo. Yeah. Well, you have to split it up because you have to recognize all the values it could hold. Because it could hold two values. But why is this Because it's absolute value. Because the definition of absolute value is a distance from zero on a number line. So whatever this value holds, because this holds a value. Oh, because it's equals 10. Oh, right. Okay. So that's why it could be 10 or negative 10. So, yeah. Okay, so let's try this again. Was that you, Haley? No. Okay, all right. Could have stopped, thank God. All right, okay, let's keep moving. It was you? Great. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna do nine minus two X equals 10 plus three X. Or I'm going to do nine minus two x equals negative 10 minus three x. So once you kind of get into habitual way of solving these problems, you just kind of just do it. I know it's kind of sounds bad because I want you guys to understand why we're doing things. But remember we set this equal to 10 and negative 10 because it's the full two values. You do likewise here, you set this equal to what you see on the other side and also you change the sign. But the, but so for absolute value, if there's like an equation in there mm -hmm. and it's like nine minus two x, uh -huh. you don't do nine plus two x. No, because if you did, you'd be totally spent more of operations. Okay. You can make a negative nine plus two x because the things that what you're trying to do here is you're trying to get its negative counterpart, meaning that you're multiplying by negative one. Okay. But you better change that also. You can't just change one. Here's a great example. Yeah, so, I was okay. just wondering if the absolute value of right. applied to what, what if x were one, right? Then you get nine minus two, which is seven, right? Now, if you did this, yeah. you get a different number. And that's not cool. Yeah. However, you can do this. If you change the sign of everything, then you get back to that. So you have to guarantee the same result. Okay. So, yeah. so it's kind of like a world operation, same too. 
Um, but good question. Let's work this out. You should get 5x and negative 1. You get that, I think. Yep. And then on the other side, you should get x on this side, negative 19, I think. Yeah. I think I got those right. And you can always check your work if you still this value. It's always just um, plug in negative 19. Uh, if you guys like, you could also do this too. Uh, you could always go to your graphing calculator and graph it. The only problem with graphing calculator is that it's uh, not terribly user friendly because you can graph stuff. And you may not see the graph in the window that you have determined for it. I'm going to teach you guys how to play with the calculator more down the road. Uh, do you guys use Desmos? Yeah. Yeah, when you're doing your homework, I would suggest you do that to check. Because if you get an answer wrong, then you know to go back and check your work and maybe you can catch your mistakes or maybe you're making a fundamental flaw repeatedly. You could stop yourself in your own tracks. That's more powerful than me telling you or anyone else telling you that you have a mistake when you can discover it for yourself, right? So what I would do, if we go to Desmos, yeah. and if I do um, abs of value, so if you set abs, nine minus two X, and you can put Y equals if you want, it doesn't really matter. And if I do the next one, y equals uh, 10 plus 3x. So what you do is you graph each side of the equation. And if I zoom out, you see I get one of the answers, right? Uh, if I click on that dot, I get negative 0.2. Negative 0.2 is negative 1 fifth, right? Okay, that's cool. Okay, this is good. I'm glad I did this. I actually didn't do it deliberately. I actually made it a mistake, but I'm catching myself. So I, I, I am a man of my word and I practice what I preach. I graph to see if it is right. Negative 19 is not an answer. Look at the graph. Let me clear my screen right now. So I have a line, 10 plus 3x. I have an absolute value, which we're going to talk about in just a little bit how to graph that. We, we don't see negative 19 intersecting the red graph. I don't see negative 19 touching it. Here's the reason why. This is actually very, very, very good that we're talking about this. Let me uh, now undo my work. Name 19 does not work, does not provide a solution. We're actually going to cross it off. We call this an extraneous, this is a new term for you guys probably. We call this an extraneous solution. I mean, it, it is a solution, but it's kind of this extra solution that doesn't really work. How come it doesn't work? Plug in negative 19. What happens? Whoa. What do you get on the right side? You get 10 minus 57, which is negative 47. What do you get on the other side? Not negative 47. You get 9 plus 38, which is 47. Oh. So those are not the same. That will happen with absolute value. So you got to check your work. I was trying to just use Desmos because it's easier. It's visual. And plus, it's more powerful because now you're making an algebraic graphical connection, which is probably one of the best things that we want to do in this class, is make those kind of connections. Uh, sometimes that doesn't quite happen in Algebra 1 or other classes. It starts happening in this class, and that's how you get better at math down the road, is you make those connections. So if we graphed it, we see that, yeah, I don't see negative 19 touching. I do see negative 1 fifth, so negative point two is a point of intersection. I didn't see negative 19. So uh, that's the way you could do it. Um, questions? So you got to check your work. Very important. So I was a little too premature in saying, oh, it's negative 19 is an answer. And then I realized, oh, yeah, it's not. Elizabeth, go ahead. Actually, there could be no no answers. That, that's a possibility. There could be two, it could be two, one, or zero. Yeah, like um, like I could have, um, I'm just trying to think. Not coming right. Let's say I had this. Let's say I have apps of x plus one equals negative two. I know this can't work. Because how can the x value equal negative number? It's impossible. Asset can never equal negative, negative number. In fact, if I were to graph it, here's how the graph would look. If I did asset of x plus one, and I just did like negative, say negative two straight up, you see the horizontal line completely misses this graph. You have nothing in common. Hence, no solution. That could happen. But if you were to 
go about it like solving the way we have like so oh, let's just you know just go do it okay i'm gonna say x plus one equals and this is the part of math that really just drives most most of us nuts we don't want you get, to get too caught in memorizing a process i mean i i know you guys do because you have a lot going on in your lives but if you just do this so let's just do what we you know we've always done x equals negative three x equals one okay and then you just circle go on through your life you can't go on through life because <laughs> this is not not true plug one in two does not equal negative two Plug negative three in, you still get two on the side. It's not equal negative two. Because you got an absolute value there. So you gotta be mindful of what's happening graphically too, which is why we're gonna talk about graphs in the next page. Um, you have to be mindful about it. So yes, yeah, so there could be myriad solutions. Could be two solutions, one solution, no solution. All right. Um, let's do some inequalities and we'll do graphs and then we'll stop there. All right, let's talk about these here. Um Ooh, okay. When you see this, you still split into two inequalities. And why do I do that? Because what about this here? Just, just keep thinking out loud. What about that? Absolute that's less than four. So can X be less than four? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Oh, I see. However, but it can't be below two. Yeah. You can't have it too low. Because what if you put negative 10? See, if you just said this, and you said x yeah, plus yeah. 4, that's misleading. Because then you can say, oh, they're negative 10 to 4. No, it can't work. I can't put negative 10, negative 20, negative 100. So you got to catch it from going too far. So it has to be in between these two numbers. Or what if you have this? Is x bigger than 4? Sure. Of course, x bigger than 4. Is that the whole story? No. Can X be less than negative four? Absolutely. X can be less than negative four or X is greater than four. So when you have an absolute value inequality, you're gonna have two scenarios you must consider like we did with the equations. When you have inequalities of absolute value, you must consider two situations. And I'm gonna show you how to solve it, but what you could do is you could say, yeah, X of course is less than four, and then you reverse this. You make that negative, you reverse this. Apply equation over here. Sure, x is bigger than 4, but then x is less than negative 4. So you have to reverse this inequality and you make that negative, just like we have always have done with inequalities, right? So that's what I'm going to do up here. I'm going to say 3x minus 6 is less than or equal to 12. Great, awesome. Also, I'm going to say 3x minus 6 is greater than or equal to negative 12. And the reason I'm saying and is that whenever it's less than, it's an and situation like you see here. If they're greater, then it's more situations. When it's greater, kind of rhymes, greater or. If it's less than and, it also kind of rhymes. So this is going to be like the standard situation. This is going to be like the or situation. So now I'm going to solve this. But you do it like we do the equations. Split into two. Solve it like the way it looks. And then do the negative counterpart, but you have to flip the inequality and do the negative counterpart. So this one's pretty easy. That's just, that's just 3x. That's less than or equal to 18. X, of course, is less than or equal to 6. Or this one, which should I say and, 3x greater than or equal to negative 6. X greater than or equal to negative 2. So x is in between two numbers. It's in between negative 2 and 6, and then include it. Include as well. So that's how you solve them. So let's, let's try another one right below. But any questions about that one? How I solved it. So again, and you have the chance to practice. Actually, I'm giving you a lot of practice. On this, so you have a chance to practice it. Okay. All right. Well, um, let's do another one. Let's look at this one here. Now, very important though, this is so important. And I've, I've, I've taught this class, my, my first day when I taught here in 2005, I taught algebra two. Uh, some years I haven't taught algebra two, some years I've taught pre-calculus, some years I've taught calculus and other classes, but this doesn't fail. I've taught this a long, long time. People will make this mistake. I don't want you to make this mistake. Please, please, please don't make this mistake. 
what you have to do so important so 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 important okay i think now you get the, get the idea <laughs> Isolate the absolute value expression before splitting. I'm not glossing over this. I am telling you how important this is because a lot of students make this mistake and they totally get really messed up answers. Before splitting, you got to isolate absolute value. I'll explain why in just a sec, why we have to do that. But you have to. Otherwise, your answer is going to be so wacky and you're going to really be confused. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Let me um, clear that. Clear, 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 clear. So, F9, apps of I have M minus 8 is less than 36, the absolute of n minus 8 is less than 4. Now you go ahead and split. You got to do a little work before you got to prepare it before you do it. No, it's kind of like if you're painting the house or painting my family or painting room, like I'm not going to start painting right away. I got to take down this board. I got to take down like that cross. I got to take down this other thing. Then you got this primer, scrap stuff off the walls. Then you can paint. So you got to prep. You got to prep the person. Add the 10, divide the 9. Add the 10, divide the 9. So you got that. Now I go and split. Then you can say, okay, now I can split it into, uh, I'll do it over here if I need a little space. M minus 8 is less than 4. M minus 8 greater than negative 4. M less than 12. M greater than negative 4. So it's in between those two numbers. Question, Elizabeth, go ahead. No, 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 because uh, so when it's inside, if you're going to change that, then you got to change this also. You're going to make it negative on this Because remember, then you're um, changing everything that, that it is. It's not just the negative eight. Like, if they had this right, if that one minus eight, it's not the same as one plus eight, right? Those are two different numbers. I could have done this, then that would be the same. They do, but you got all ten dots there. You got you got to take care of every, it's like the You got to take care of this first. Make that negative seven, and then do that to that. You can't just change one thing about it. Like yeah, this here. You can't just change the negative to a positive and call the day. You can't because then you're just making more of operations. You gotta make sure it's kind of like a parentheses, think about that. And you gotta address that first. Very important. So um so this is good. I'm I'm hearing a misconception that some of you guys have about apps of values. Um let me go ahead and I really don't want to clear this just yet. I'll I'll talk about it in just a sec. But the answer is between negative four and twelve. So m minus eight is less than four. Or am I say it's greater than negative four? Now, why do I do that again? Why do I isolate? Because what if I had four plus the absolute of x is less than 10? What if I had that, right? Then you're telling me that absolute of x is less than six because you have to guarantee that this part here is either less than six. Or greater than negative six. In order for this to make sense, you have to isolate this before you split it. You move that four over, and then you say, okay, so now outside of that, it's less than six. So x is less than six or greater than negative six. You can't just um, split it to two without isolating the absolute value. Otherwise, you can get answers that are really out of whack. So you have to isolate because the whole what, what is the whole point of absolute value in the first place? The distance from zero in a number line, right? So that's why you have to isolate it, and then you can split into two. Um, and another misconception is just to clear up really quickly: if you have this here, it's not this. 
because think of it like this way: there's, there's actually an absolute value that's that's invisible. Sorry, there's a parentheses that's invisible. You have to respect that first. Once you respect that, then you're okay. So you don't want to just change. You can change this time if you wanted to. You've been fine. Okay, one last one. We'll talk about graphs. Um, here, n over three equals two, or n over three equals what? Negative two. So n of six, or negative six. So again, you get two minutes. That's kind of an easier one. And why can I do that? Because n over three is two away from zero on a number line, right? Just like yeah, yes, yeah, go yeah. Just like we have this one right here. That value is the difference it is from zero to a number, right? That's when you got to that over. You got to that four over, then you can actually split the two. Because the whole point of absolute value is to be a this from zero to a number, right? So, all right, last last bit here. Um, um geez. This might be kind of trial by fire here. Um, I'm a little surprised that this is in this section. Because <laughs> I don't know if you guys are quite ready. Let me look at the homework really fast. Give me a sec here. I, I think I might just for. Yeah, no, this is, out, this is totally out of place. It's totally, yeah, this should be in chapter two. Yeah, hold on. Give me one more sec. Hold on here. Yeah, we're gonna skip those problems because that's yeah, that's totally out of place. Yeah, so um let's skip the let's not worry about those graphing problems. Okay. All right. So homework. Here's the homework, guys. Uh what time do we get out, by the way? I think eleven fifteen. Okay, so you got twenty minutes. You might be able to put a dent into the homework. Can we leave like two, three minutes away so we can end? Yeah, I need, I want to get lunch too. Yeah, let's do that. Now that we actually have like real lunches now for teachers, they actually have really good lunches for us. I'm really excited. Not just the box lunches. Yeah, true. All right, let me go and stop my recording.